I'm sitting waiting for that bill to come to my desk. I hope that they do it. They've been promising it for years. Mitch has to pull it off. He's working very hard. He's got to pull it off. President Trump putting the onus on Senate Republican leaders to fulfill one of his major campaign promises to repeal Obamacare. And we're back now with the panel. Julie, I got to say, I was struck by the president saying that he's sitting there at his desk waiting for the bill to come there. I know he's made a few calls, but this sure seems different from Ronald Reagan or Bill Clinton actively lobbying, bringing people in. Uh, I mean, am I wrong or is you're not wrong? There, there is not a lot of hands-on effort happening uh, by the president, certainly on the details of the legislation. He's made a couple of phone calls. He has done a few interviews where he's talked about this, but when it comes to the actual policy details in this legislation, it's a hands-off strategy. But frankly, Republicans are not that upset about it. They actually would prefer that he not start meddling with the details on this. What they would like to see him do, though, is try to use the bully pulpit that he does have, the audience that he does have on Twitter to sell the bill. They see him do this sometimes and be pretty off message. He's talked about uh, trying to put more money in the bill, which is not exactly a Republican argument. He has talked about, you know, trashed the House bill, which he was, was so mean. in favor of, said it was mean. So what Republicans would like is for him to stay out of the policy detail, but try to at least sell this to the American people. Britt, we may be surprised, but I think you would agree that whenever this bill does come up for a vote, probably not this week, but maybe next week or the week after, that passing it is a bit of a long shot. And I guess my question is, how come? Well, I would look at it a little bit differently, Chris. It seems to me that you remember when the first version of this measure came out, right. and about a dozen or so senators made it plain they, they couldn't vote for it. So it goes back for a little rehab, and it comes out again, and we have we're down to where two or three are publicly against it. That doesn't mean all the rest of them who were for, against it before will vote for it. But it suggests to me that considerable progress has been made and that the Republican leadership in the Senate is now quite close uh, to where, where they can pass the bill. So when it gets down to it, the question you asked Rand Paul at the end of your interview with him is the question every Republican senator is going to have to face, and that is to say, in the, when it gets down to it, are you going to cast a vote, the effect of which is to leave Obamacare fully in place? And, you know, remember when those House members all resisted the first version of the House bill and they all went home? I think they thought they were going to be heroes. They weren't. And the result was, with fairly minor changes, that bill ultimately passed. I think there's a significant chance that will happen here as well. In the time that we have left, I, I, I want to try to drill down into the relative merits of the current system versus the revised Senate bill. And here is what President Trump had to say this weekend. We are very, very close to ending this health care nightmare. We are so close. The legislation working its way through Congress provides the choice and control people want, the affordability they need, and the quality they deserve in health care. Zeke, I want to get you into a debate with the, your policy uh, <laughs> counterpart here, uh, uh, Michael Needham, and, and I'm going to let you go first. W is the president wrong when it comes to the question of Obamacare versus the current Senate bill? Why is Obamacare better? Well, the current Senate bill will throw 22 million people off of insurance. But we don't and know that. That was the... the it will. It, look, it's going to throw uh, at least over 15 million, because that's the Medicaid part. So it's going to throw million people off of insurance. Second, it totally undermines the insurance marketplace with the Cruz Amendment. It actually makes the bill worse because the adverse selection Rand Paul was talking about will be even worse. Healthy that, that, that says that healthy people can buy cheap plans, sick people have to go for the full basically plan. Basically, it undermines the freedom of cancer patients that I take care of because they will not be able to afford any health insurance given the Cruz proposal. So what about the all. subsidies that are in the Cruz? They're not, any, everyone knows they're inefficiently distributed and they're nowhere near enough. And the third point I would make is $45 billion for opioid care over 10 years may sound like a lot of money to people, but it's the president's own commission says they need over $220 billion. So it's 20%. So you've got high uninsurance, undermining the insurance market, and you don't solve the opioid crisis. It's a terrible bill. We ask you for questions for the panel, and we got this on Facebook on the new revised Senate Republican bill from Mark Hall, who writes, repeal the ACA, Affordable Care Act, as promised, do not fix, repeal it outright. What is wrong with the free market and patient choice, just like we have in auto insurance? Michael, 
how do you answer Mark and how do you answer Zeke on this question of whether the revised bill is better or worse than the current system? Yeah, I mean, Mark's exactly right. The problem when you talk to people in the Senate is there's probably at this point only 15 or 20 votes in the Senate for full repeal of Obamacare. For seven years, the Republican Party promised full repeal of Obamacare. We need to move towards a patient-centric free market plan. This bill doesn't do it. And it's because, unfortunately, the Republican Party uh, wasn't serious about repeal. And that's a tragedy. And it means that but the is it, So are you saying that we should leave Obamacare in place or should we go for no, this? So I think this bill is the first step in a process of repealing Obamacare. And it why is Zeke wrong? Zeke's wrong because Zeke's doing what a lot of people in Washington, D.C. do, and he's playing baseline games. And he's looking uh, at these things. The CBO said 23 million people uh, would be in the individual market because of the employer mandate. Uh, in the individual mandate, it turns out, there's only 10. When the CBO scores this, they assume that magically it's to go from 10 million people in the individual market up to 16 million people. Uh, before they even do some some scoring, and so he's playing games on that side. Wait a second. On the wait, Medicaid wait, expansion, hold on. Bill, the Medicaid minute. expansion is real. Taking so 800 I'm, I'm billion dollars out of Medicaid is not going to expand the number of people who are covered. And the second point I would make is there is no freedom in this bill for people who have pre-existing conditions. This completely removes the promise to them that if you have a pre-existing condition, you can have affordable okay. insurance. Michael. So, so the problem with Zeke's point is that this bill actually keeps all, the, not all, it takes away what, what was created by Dr. Emanuel and others, which was an incentive in Medicaid to ensure able-bodied people, for states to look more at able-bodied people rather than more vulnerable populations like the disabled. It takes away that disincentive, but it actually keeps the federal subsidy for the Medicaid expansion population. And so Zeke's not uh, being entirely fair on remember, that point. And remember this, Chris, um, the triumph of Obamacare is this coverage for pre-existing conditions, which basically defeats the whole idea of insurance, which is, for example, if in the automobile insurance market, if you could wait till you had a wreck and then buy insurance and have, have the repairs covered, that's comparable to what we're doing but here. But Britt, if I have me, cancer... Just, hold on, let me finish. Can I please finish? We got the idea of right. insurance is that you, you purchase it to guard against risks and, and, and things that may occur in the future. It's not that you purchase the coverage after you're already sick. But if so, that so once once that idea is gone, Obamacare is essential. Got, it remains. You got if, twenty seconds. If I have cancer through no fault of my own, I didn't hit a car. Uh, I need to have insurance to cover me. This bill does nothing for those people. It only makes the price of their insurance ever higher. Cancer patients and patients with multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, get completely Gentlemen, written out of the a coverage. We, we are not going to settle bill. this. And guess what? We don't have to because we're going to have more time to talk about it. But let's bring you all back and have the conversation. Thank you, panel. See you next Sunday.